welcome back to my channel for a very exciting new series where we sit back, relax, have a cuppa, you spill the tea, and we'll do our best to mop it up. I'm joined by my lovely wife and mother of my child, Jen. How are you, babe? I'm doing good. I'm doing really good. Excited to be here. Well, I sent a post out on Instagram last week just asking people, you know, to send in any submissions with problems, anything they're going through, and we were blown away by the response. I spent all weekend reading through everyone's messages, and it kind of really made me realize, like, not only how much people are going through in a society unfit for the human mind, but how, you know, everyone's not alone. Everyone's going through something and more reason to do something like this. So look, we're not professionals, but we wanna just put some good advice out there. I think we both come from kind of different sort of upbringings and we have different, slight different mindsets. So I think having the, the double power can yeah. help, right? Having like two perspectives on one situation can be helpful, perhaps. Well, hopefully, yeah. well, that's, that's the aim. So uh, you guys sent so many questions in, we printed them out. We kind of, we, we wanna pick them at random because we wanna be fair. So we're gonna go through them now. And today, because obviously there's so many different topics, we wanna focus on self-worth. I think that was probably the most overriding issue with people going through. So we thought for this episode, we will tackle that. So you ready? Yes, All let's right. do this. Let's pick the first question. I haven't been having any motivation to do anything. My mentality about myself has been so low these past couple of weeks. I feel worthless, not worth it, no self-confidence, and it's just been consuming me a lot, and I honestly don't know how to get out of it. I've been depressed for a long time, and these type of episodes comes and goes, but it hasn't been this bad in a long time. I'm sorry that you're going through that. That's, that's tough. I feel like there is something quite collective going on with the lack of motivation these days, because yeah. honestly, I feel it. I've noticed a pattern with me and motivation is that it definitely comes in waves mm -hmm. and there are just some times when the tide is low and there is no motivation that day even if every fiber of my bone is so against it I will still just force myself to do something mm -hmm. like you have to just tune into that higher version of yourself you know that version where you know it's like the best version of yourself mm -hmm. you just have to cling on to that like and so I think oh the best version of myself will at least take a shower today and even the small step of just cleansing your body with the warm water and being grateful for the fact that you even have warm water and letting it just rush down you it is a good start I think of it kind of as like a cleansing ritual and then once I get out, it's like having that small little like win makes stacks up and mm -hmm. it creates this foundation for me to actually do something productive. I think in these types of situations, I have to remember that I am the only person that can get myself out of this hole. Yeah. Someone can throw in a rope or a ladder or an elevator, but you have to be the one that actually steps in. No one can save you except for yourself. Yeah, I agree. And I think one of the biggest things I've learned over the last couple of years is how our thoughts become our experience. How we look at the world is how it's gonna bring it back. It's like a genie in a bottle, like mm -hmm. your wish is my command. If you think life sucks, I'm never gonna be happy. Your wish is my command, that's what you're gonna receive. And I know it's really difficult when life's not great and there is so much negativity around us. I mean, you can't avoid it now. And trying to get into that higher frequency where you, you do feel better about life. And I know when you're feeling bad, it's hard just to be like, life's great, I'm gonna be positive now. Mm -hmm. But gratitude is such a great way to try and link into that frequency. If you're not feeling great, if you think about things you're grateful for, whether it's in your life or whether it's just nature, things around, there's always something you can have gratitude for. And I promise you, once you get into that frequency, once you start thinking about things you're grateful for, you will start feeling better mm -hmm. because we are all frequencies and positive and negativity is two separate frequencies. So if you're feeling bad, you're just gonna attract that and that's what you're gonna follow. So like Jen said, having these small little steps of just like, I can do this, washing her hair, going for a walk, mm -hmm. doing these little things that really, really help. And before you know it, you know, once you take that one step up, you're going up. Once you take that one step down, you're going down. Mm -hmm. And I think trying to do those things, and for us, we have rituals, we do things that no matter what, especially with a baby, mm -hmm. like <laughs> have to do the meditation, have to do breath work, have to do some kind of exercise, even if it's just a walk or a bit of yoga. Because when you can do that, you can handle a screaming baby a lot easier. So I think, you know, trying to believe in yourself, intention setting is so important as well, like having words of affirmation, telling yourself you can do it, even if you don't believe it, looking in the mirror. I know people say this a lot, right? But again, it's the same thing. If you say you're powerful, you're kind, you're, you're brave, you're strong, you're telling that to the universe and it will bring it back to you with that in your life. So words of affirmation are really important. Fake it till you make it, even mm. if you don't believe it. And and just try and be kind to yourself. You know, we are in a world where there's a lot of pressure around us. There's people are doing these things and 
we often sort of look too much into our lives. So just trying to take one step at a time and try and give yourself a bit of grace, you know? I 100% agree on just tuning into the gratitude mm. and the affirmations especially. So if I was feeling really unmotivated, my affirmation would be, I have all the energy to do the tasks that mm. I have committed to today. And if I don't, then there is always tomorrow. Yeah, that's really beautiful. And I think starting the day with gratitude, ending the day with gratitude really sets yourself up. Yeah, just sandwich. It's a, a sandwich. A gratitude it sandwich. Is. It yeah. really is because we do a lot of the time, we live in a subconscious pattern. You know, you wake up, you just, you read a phone and then you brush your teeth and you go to work and all these things that you're living a subconscious life where you're not really thinking, you're not being conscious. So trying to force yourself into the unknown a little bit, do little things that scare you because in life, if you really want something, you will get that. If you really don't want something, you will get that. Again, it's the universe. If you really focus on what you don't want, you're gonna receive that. So try and be kind to yourself and you know, you can do this. How do I think positive when everything around me is so negative? I mean, that's, there is so much that's negative around us. You can't avoid it now with the news, with mm -hmm. everything is what's wrong with the world. We're not focusing on what's right with the world. Even when I moved to LA, I'm looking at these beautiful pink sunsets we have, like, wow, how lovely is this? And someone told me it's only pink because of the pollution. I'm that like, was Great. me. That was me. Yeah. So now <laughs> sunsets are I was are like, ruined. it's the inversion layer. <laughs> yeah, right? But even a sunset, you can find a negativity. And I get it, like, we can't be oblivious to what's wrong in the world, right? There is a lot that's going bad, but Things you can't control, you just have to let go of. You know, if right. you have values, like for me, you know, animal cruelty is something that I, you know, of course no one likes that, but if you can't control it, you have to let it go. And what you can do, you can do that. For me, don't eat meat, great. That's something that I can do that's mm -hmm. doing my part. And then you're not feeling too sort of stressed out about, you know, the negativity in the world, right? Yeah, because it could be like totally consuming. And yeah. I think during that time, your algorithm had specifically spun all these animal cruelty videos for mm -hmm. you because you were watching, you know, like PETA. It was my and, yeah, and yeah. then your Explorer page just all became animal cruelty. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it does exist out there and it's horrible to see. Um, but I think there is a way to protect your mental health as well. Yeah. Because, I mean, our phones are very, very powerful devices right now. And it's just the truth in the fact that we're on our phones the majority of the day. Mm -hmm. So if you can tailor your feed, your Instagram feed, your social media feeds to be more balanced, yeah. I think that can really be helpful. That mute button is very powerful. And it, you don't need to feel guilty thinking that, oh, I'm just muting and being ignorant about these issues because you can set aside time to be proactive and read those articles in slower yeah. forms of journalism. I personally love reading The New Yorker and The Atlantic, and I get those magazines sent to my house. So that way, on the weekend, I will have an hour to be up to date with the current events, rather than always just being slammed mm -hmm. with all the negativity that is especially on our phones. And yeah. you know, the negative things are what sells. That's what captures our yep. attention, which is why they keep popping up. No one's gonna click a uh, article saying like, you know, life. Yeah, yeah, we lived another day, yeah. wow. <laughs> and I think it's like, unfortunately, you know, we can blame the media, but really it's us, right? Because we are attracted to negative stuff. If you yeah. think about what you're, basically what you put your attention to, like YouTube even, for example, like it's so easy to focus and put our attention on things like gossip things and what's wrong with someone mm -hmm. who's got cancelled and all these things that is that serving you is that making you feel better about yourself yeah. like for example you guys are here right now watching this video that's something you should be doing but like I'm joking <laughs> but you should be but the uh trying to put yourself in situations especially social media like Jen said like that was a big thing for me like kind of creating my social media around things that I align with. Now, now my Instagram and Twitter feed is all about consciousness and law of attraction right. and how to be kind. Mm -hmm. and, and now that's my point of interest. That's my attraction. So you can create to some degree what your attraction is and you can create a positive world. You know, even Mother Teresa said like, don't invite me to an anti-war rally, invite me to a pro-peace rally because unfortunately a lot of the time we're fighting a negative with a negative. You know, mm -hmm. if something's bad, we're angry or rage and Unfortunately, there's not much peace, there's not much love and trying to get that collective consciousness of everyone on that positive frequency. Like Jen said earlier, like people are feeling bad at the moment because, you know, there's COVID, there's a lot of negativity. Yeah. Politics is worse than it's ever been. And 
people are more separated than they've ever been. So it is really hard to find that peace and that love. And that's where you can do that. Everything, there's so much good in the world as well. There's so much beauty. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is go outside and look at nature, look at the trees. You don't have to live this fantastic life. It's, it's all around us. And I think putting our attention on what is good in the world as opposed to what's bad, you'll be, you'll be happier. Yeah. My issue is that I've been struggling with my emotions a lot and I feel like it has affected the people around me. I don't mean any harm, but sometimes my emotions take over and I feel so helpless. Like when I wanted to explain my reasons, I tend to get teary just because I feel so suffocated. Any advice on how you manage your emotions? Wow. This is me. Very relatable. I think so there's a lot relatable. of people right now nodding their heads, right? Mm -hmm, absolutely. I mean, I am definitely a ball of emotions and I don't think that is necessarily a bad thing at all. Mm. We are always made of emotions mm -hmm. and emotions are 50-50. There are 50% good emotions and there are 50% bad emotions. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just how you relay the, the things that you're going through with the people that are around you. Yeah. I think first off, I think there's nothing wrong in letting your emotions out, mm -hmm. but I think it's kind of tuning it into like how you're actually feeling because a lot of negative emotions, it really comes from a place of sadness. And if someone is sad and they open up to you, like when has anyone gotten like upset or annoyed when someone's just genuinely sad and pouring their heart out? I have never ever experienced that. Mm -hmm. If anything, I think it's amazing that that person is so vulnerable and they trust me yep. to open up to. I think mm -hmm. when it's like anger or resentment or you know. It's how and when. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. I think when it's too more into like an angry vent I think that's when it can be a little draining on the person that is listening to you so I think it's important to find the right person to open up to like pick a person select a person in your life that has deserved the right to hear you out and I mean, I personally struggle with this because when I'm going through something negative, I don't want to burden someone with mm. my problems. But I'm going to be honest, every time I have said that to one of my best friends or even Ben, they never say, oh, you're burdening me right now. In fact, they thank me for opening up to them. Yeah. And it feels like such a great release. Um, and I find it extremely cathartic to let out my feelings. But let's say there's no one around and there's no one that I want to open up to. I will write. Journaling has been such a powerful tool for me. And it's great because it forces me to be with my thoughts and to slow down because my mind is faster than my hand. So it really breaks down on what exactly is bothering me. And then after I will read the entry and then it'll start making sense to me because when you write something, that's basically you transcribing what you're thinking and again your thoughts create your reality and when you can see your thoughts on paper it helps you guide yourself into a better route i couldn't agree more and i think tone and how and when you do it mm -hmm. is so important the tone so like the always tone. i think every situation in life i always try and think seek first to understand then to be understood right to think from the other person's perspective so if you're with your friends if you're a friend and someone comes in and they're being negative, they're complaining about this, that, like your first thoughts are like, oh, they're, they're bringing me down, their tone's mm -hmm. bad. And that's your first thought. You're not empathizing with someone because they've just come and kind of taken away some of your energy coins, you know? And yeah. I think until you can kind of be open, but do it in the right way and the right timing and be, you know, not sort of too reactive and do it when you're calm and speak to people with an open heart, everyone's like Jen said everyone's gonna have an open heart so if you're gonna go meet your friends you're not feeling great but look, guys I'm so happy to be here just to let you know I'm kind of going through it a little bit like I'm not feeling too great I'm gonna do my best to get through it today but just to let you know if I'm not being my best self today this is why and I think setting that up everyone's gonna understand because people find it really hard to empathize with people because they don't look from their perspective. I think letting them know how you're feeling, being open, like Jen said, journaling, trying to get yourself in that frame of mind before because once you know you tell someone you're not feeling that great, not only they're probably going through something as well, you can probably open up. There's so many friend groups now that don't ask questions, they mm. don't really open up to each other, but you can be the first one to do that. I really like what you said about there's like a difference between like complaining and just opening up. Mm -hmm. Those are two, it's like you're still sharing what's on your mind and how you're feeling, but they're, it, they're, the tone is so different. Well, you're resisting the present moment and if what you resist persists. So if you're resisting the present moment, you're kind of trying to fight it, you're trying to kind of be like, no, this is bad, this is bad. 
then again, you're going to attract that. Being open, that's that's the biggest thing I can recommend. Yeah, and you could even be open about what you're about to like complain. I don't say complain, but like venting. Like sometimes, yeah. sometimes I just need to get it out. Yeah. It's like it's like vomit, mm -hmm. and I'll just be like, hey, do you have a minute? Mm -hmm. I really just need to vent something out on my chest for like five minutes. Mm -hmm. And Ben will be like, okay. And it's almost like he puts on like emotional hardware. Like he'll put on his like hazmat suit, and I'll be like, and then this happened, blah blah. blah. And then after I just spew it all out i feel so much better and ben is like all right we're done and then I didn't he have just to say anything exactly yeah. a lot of times you don't even need to even say anything like you yeah. just need to hear you, people just need to be heard out well that's what this was so powerful you know the whole weekend spent reading everyone's submissions because i could feel that i could feel a lot of people that of course i want to reply to everyone and make them feel heard but i think the fact that they're able to write it out you can just mm -hmm. feel the energy of like knowing that people feel a little bit better just getting out and knowing someone's listening to them and, mm -hmm. and give a shit because unfortunately in the world right now, it feels like no one cares and the world doesn't care, society doesn't care, like how are you gonna feel positive? So I think getting it out, being open with the friends, trying to put mm -hmm. the energy out there and, and like you, it will improve. Like again, like if you have that mindset that this is gonna be a bad day, my friends aren't gonna care, this is gonna suck, my energy is gonna zap them, it probably will. Yeah. Starting before you meet your friends, words of affirmation, bit of gratitude, being open with them at the start, and you'll have a lovely hangout. <laughs> I'm having a hard time maintaining confidence because it feels like all my friends are miles ahead of me. I'm on my college journey a lot later than everyone else and my job doesn't make me as much money. I feel like I'm just not as smart as everyone around me. I'd love some advice on coping with that. That's real as well. Everything's so relatable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Firstly, I think success is subjective, you know? Yeah. Like, People think success is having the flashy cars, the status, all that stuff, and that is an element of it, but you don't know what that person's going through. A lot of the time, someone has you know, outer riches, but they have inner poverty, and I think starting with understanding that success is subjective, you know, but success comes from within, mm -hmm. happiness comes from within, everything comes from within, and I think that's a really powerful thing to kind of to start with, and obviously, like, yeah, I know it's easy, you don't want to compare to your friends, no mm -hmm. one should compare because you don't know what people are going through, but I know it's, you know, easier said than done. Yeah, right? absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think we all freaking know to never compare, mm -hmm. but it's something that we all do from time to time. And we just have to catch ourselves when we do it because the comparing game is a game where you will always lose because there's always someone that's gonna be killing it better than you. Even if you're like a millionaire, there's someone that's there's gonna be making two million. If there's yeah. someone making two million, there's someone making three million. Like you're always going to be dissatisfied if you are comparing yourself. Mm -hmm. Especially waiting for, I'll be happy when I get there or when I've achieved this. And you know, we, yeah. we're in a world where you know, there are people that do well or they've on paper, they've got the followers, they've got the looks, they've got the money, all these things. And you see people that are really struggling still and mm -hmm. aren't happy. And I think a lot of the time people think that they need things, things and stuff in life, certain out exterior success to be happy. And that is not the case whatsoever. And I think everyone sees the world different. You know, how you see the world isn't how it is, it's mm -hmm. how you are. And your personality is your personal reality because how you see the world is different. How your friend sees the world is different. They might be doing well in their business, but they might be struggling to have that time to be a good family member, to be loving to themselves. Like if yeah. you're always hustling, you're not giving time for your mental health, then if you're not happy and you've got all this stuff around you, sometimes that can feel worse because you realize that you sh these are the things that you thought would bring you happiness. So I think trying to just focus on what you love about yourself, what you think you're good at, whatever that is, try and focus on that and try and own that because everyone has got something they love. I think it was Einstein said this lovely quote that if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it's gonna spend its whole life thinking it's stupid. Mm -hmm. And I think that's such a powerful thing, you know, comparing yourself to friends, thinking that they're happy because they've got this, it's just not the case. So I think owning that, understanding, finding love in yourself and finding what your path is, whatever that is in life, I think you'll be good. Yeah, I love that. I think it's also important to realize that everyone is on their own different paths mm -hmm. and you cannot compare your journey to someone else's. Mm -hmm. And you know, I feel like there is like a, a like an age pressure that a lot mm. of people feel and unfortunately it's just getting younger and younger like mm. the standards for success has gotten to it's an absurd level now people think like oh my gosh i'm peaking at 18 <laughs> like you're 18 years old like you're still a fetus yeah. like your your prefrontal cortex hasn't even finished developing yet like how are you supposed to be killing it when mm. you're still so young when you think about what confidence is i think a lot of younger people think confidence is 
flashy stuff and you're doing this and who shouts the loudest mm -hmm. and all. I'm, usually the people that shout the loudest, the ones that feel superior to other people actually feel inferior because confidence is knowing who you are and owning that. Exactly. And I think that is the biggest misconception loads of kids have where they think that confidence is exterior and all this kind of stuff when it isn't. It's like mm -hmm. you could be the most confident person and be the quietest person, you know? I would like to know how you deal with stress, especially related to self-doubts in different areas. Oh, stress is something that we all struggle with. Yeah. And I think right now it's been, you know, a, a pretty stressful chapter in our lives because we're new parents. I feel like stress happens when you're dealing with something completely new mm -hmm. or you feel like you don't have, yeah, if you yeah. feel like you don't, you're, you're not prepared or you yeah. feel like you're going into something mm -hmm. that is bigger than you. Mm -hmm. But what really helps is just reminding myself that no matter what happens, there is going to be a way to resolve mm -hmm. it. And yes, it might not be immediate, but with time, everything is eventually resolved. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm stressed, I have to actually write out some affirmations or listen to some positive thoughts. I highly recommend listening to Louise Hay. She is just an incredible woman. A friend recently recommended me to her and just listening to her affirmations about stress, it really helps me set up my day. I'll listen to it in the morning. And stress is all mental. And sometimes if I'm already so stressed out, I'm like feeling red. I've noticed that there's nothing that, I can't really talk myself out of it. So that's when I realized like, oh crap, my body is actually extremely tense. Mm. My neck is stiff, my mm. shoulders are up and you know, like my heartbeat is connected. pounding, yeah. exactly. So that's when I know like, okay, I can't fight the mind with the mind. I have to just do something with my body. So if that means stepping outside and going for a walk, sometimes even going for a drive is so, so therapeutic. Like even if it's just like a 15 minute drive to the grocery store, mm -hmm. it just clears my mind. So that way it just calms my body down. And that way my mind can think a lot clearer and suddenly there's like a solution that's presented to me because I'm no longer dealing with all the racing thoughts yeah. of stress. Which is very normal, right? I mean, it's like looking at the stats of it as well. Like we are stressed 70% of the time. Mm -hmm. We have 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day. 95% of them are repetitive. So of course we're stressed out, you know? And I think I've spoken about it before, but what stress is, right? When your body is stressed, it goes on fight or flight emergency mode. Mm -hmm. It thinks it's the primal side of it thinks it's a predator. Watch out, it shuts down your immune system, your nervous system, the heart rate increases, your glucose increases, all these things to get away from this predator because the body doesn't know the difference between thoughts and reality. So the more the immune system and everything shuts down, that's where diseases happen. That's when your body physically gets bad. And that's why they say like stress can destroy your body. And mm -hmm. I know this can make people feel more stressed right now about that, but it's also the flip side of it because if stress can destroy your body, then calm can heal your body. And like Jen said, understanding that and putting yourself in situations that are gonna make you feel more, more love and more kindness and gratitude, words of affirmation, breathing is the most important thing you can do. Deep breathing, Wim Hof is the best man in the world. <laughs> Watch anything he does because we don't realize how much we have shallow breaths. When we have shallow breaths that connects to our body, we're not pumping the blood, the oxygen, like, and most of the time we live a shallow breath and like learning that, trying to have as many triggers in the day to do deep breathing. Like right now, guys, come on, let's have a look. <sighs> Just a deep breath. Yeah, I was like breathing as you oh. said that and I was like, I need to breathe. <laughs> but it is so, it's the most important thing. Not only does it calm you down, but it does so much wonders for your body as well. So trying to put yourself in situations, and I know this could sound scary, right? But it should do because we need to realize how what stress can do. Most of us just get stressed. Oh, it's just me. I'm stressed. This and that. They're looking for things to be stressful for because unfortunately we get addicted to stress. Mm -hmm. Stress is like it's a dopamine hit, yeah. and we don't. That's why toxic relationships. That's why victimization, feeling sorry for yourself. All these things you don't realize it is a dopamine hit that we do subconsciously get addicted to. So and it's because it's familiar too. Yes. Yeah. And I think knowing exactly knowing knowing that feeling and knowing what to expect. That's what we always come yeah. back to. Mm -hmm. It's a Even comfort. It's a comfort, yeah, it's a which is comfort. so messed up. Yeah. yeah. But then understanding that gratitude, words of affirmation, breathing, meditation, all these things mm -hmm. are so, so valuable. Mm -hmm. They're like just tools that are always going to be helpful to you mm -hmm. in your life. Right. So that about wraps it up for us today. Of course, we'd love to go through more, talk more, but we understand that time is very valuable on YouTube. But maybe, you know, if you guys like this, we can do a longer format, maybe turn it into a podcast or something. But for now, thank you guys so much 
for your submissions. And look, we want to do this a regular thing. The next episode, we want to base it on relationships. So if you do have any problems, anything, please send them to our new email, spilltheteaplace at gmail.com. We try to reply to everyone that we can and add the questions into the next episode. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my lovely wife for joining me. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.